world. And today it's Tom Siebel, Chairman and CEO of C3AI. So first, a look at the company. It's the future of artificial intelligence. It's vast. From predictive technology to healthcare to cybersecurity to climate change, the potential really is everywhere. Enter C3AI, led by Siebel, the software giant and legendary techie. Here's how it works. C3AI provides the platform, and the customer then uses it within their expertise. Now, one way is by selling subscription services for analytic functions for energy management, like inventory optimization or customer relationship management and predictive maintenance. Now, a popular example of this is if, say, a piece of equipment uh, needed a replacement part, like on a plane, for instance. AI can tell you about that two days before the part fails, saving you time, money, and a headache. The company also partners with Microsoft, Baker Hughes, AstraZeneca, Shell, and leading universities, uh, informing C3 AI Digital Transformation Institute, all of that to speed up the use of AI in the world. Now, at the end of 2020, it had 30 clients, with three of them making up 44% of its revenue, and the lion's share really coming from Baker Hughes at 70%, a huge believer plus a minority owner. And C3 AI gets about 30% of its revenue from the oil and gas industry, and it's betting it can get a whole lot more, especially as oil power producers and powerhouses transition to a renewable and cleaner future. I recently caught up with Tom Siebel and asked him how AI helps the oil and gas industry. We can use AI to identify device failure on an offshore oil rig before it happens. And these offshore oil rigs are very, very complex machines. And, you know, when things go bad, they can go very bad very fast. And, uh, you know, as, as we all know, and the, the cost of failure is basically incalculable. And so we can identify failure of these devices on the offshore oil rigs, say 18 to 24 hours before they happen, say low pressure compressors or whatever they might be, that might sound innocuous, but when they fail, it's catastrophic. How much do you wind up saving a company, for example, with the predictive technology, rather than say like waiting for a part on the rig to fail and then having to replace it? Well, when you do it across their entire value chain, upstream, downstream, midstream renewables, you're looking at potentially three or four billion dollars a year in, in economic benefit. Wow. And, you know, by the way, this move to renewables in the part of Shell and Enel and others is really not about, I think, it's less about um, embracing climate change, which they're, you know, or, or, or climate security, which they all do, and environment security, they all do. Candidly, you know, as renewable energy companies, they're going to make more money, okay? They're going to be more profitable entities. Is there stuff that the AI will be used in the oil and gas industry or alternative energy industry that you think is going to be really different and cool that we're not even thinking about a year ago? Well, it sounds a little mundane, but if you apply AI-based predictive maintenance to, you know, hundreds of millions of assets, okay, in the power production and distribution uh, network, I mean, you avoid Texas, okay? You know, you, you know, you, I mean... When these things break, it goes real bad. Okay, you you know when you can, for example, you know identify a um, <clears throat> you know transformer failure in New York before the transformer fails. Lights don't go out in New York for three days. I mean, this is a good thing. People don't die. And so you know we look at you know across the oil and gas value chain. This is everything from well placement analytics, the optimization of hydrocarbon production. Uh, integration of renewables, AI-based predictive maintenance, distributed energy resource management, um, fuel station analytics. I mean, Shell sells more coffee than than than, than Starbucks does. Okay, they have five thousand retail outlets. They literally sell more coffee than Starbucks. So we're we're completely transforming the oil and gas uh, value chain from exploration to production to distribution and most importantly, integration of renewables. And there's a very, very critical AI problem called distributed energy resource management, which has to do with the balancing of these energy sources. And just to, on that point, does that mean like if you're a utility company and your power mix, so it's making sure you have the right power mix? The load on the grid has to balance at any given second at the amount that's being produced, okay? That has to stay in balance. You just can't take excess power and power to the ground, okay? And you have too little power, or you have brownouts, and, and things start to fail. So it, it has to balance perfectly. Now, this is relatively simple when you had one producer, say, a you know, generation facility, and many consumers, okay? Now, with the smart grid, we have, you know, everybody is a producer of energy. 
you know, with, with, with their batteries, with storage, with their solar panels, with their windmills, sometimes at very, very large scale in the North Atlantic. So this, 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 uh, this business of distributed energy resource management, where we're balancing load and demand in real time across a grid infrastructure that might be like Western Europe, is a extraordinarily difficult problem. And it is an AI problem. And without this technology, we cannot deploy renewables.